So welcome to the decorating of the Dragon Lady folio. Now, as I said in the construction, I've designed it to fit the journal pages from the kit. Although you could use any of the kits or any papers you want, you could use the decorative papers and decorate the pages with them instead and do all your normal scrapbooking things. But as I said, I've used them, uh, designed it for these in particular. So this is the largest one. I did have a bit of mishap with my printer, kept on jamming, I've sorted it now. But I didn't need to waste it because the papers themselves were fine, the printed bits. So I've printed off four of these. Now I have prepped some of them already just to save some time, but there are loads in the kit. So you could make the same album a few times and it all look different because there are so many of the papers, of the journal papers. As you can see, I've cut it in half, which I'll show you later. I've needed some decorative papers as well. Now, I'm not sure if I'm using this one, but I've chosen this fabulous one for my cover. And it also has the matching um, backing paper using the same sort of colors. So I've printed off one of them as well. And I've already cut these for my cover just to save some time. But you can see there's a nice choice of papers. So I'm going to be using these on the inside of my album. And also, as usual with your Victoria Designs kits, you've got loads of paper, uh, pages of ephemeris. You've got journal cards, pockets, and some other pockets. So we're going to use some of these today as well. So let's get going with the cover. So just as I do normally using any of my cover pieces, I just measure the rectangle and each measurement then just go down a quarter of an inch. So my cover was seven and a half. So my page, my paper is seven and a quarter wide and it was eight and a half tall, sorry, eight and three quarters tall, so my paper is eight and a half. And this is the dragon paper, and I've just taken some distress ink, some black soot, and gone round the corner, and that's just gotten rid of the white core. Now this one, I haven't done it. You can see that the core, because we've trimmed our paper, it shows the distress ink, We'll just mask and hide that and just give us a nice finish. So again, we're just going to glue around the edge of my paper and around the middle. But I'm also going to add some glue just around and on top of my magnets there. Because that's where the paper is going to have the most activity, should, uh, should we say. I'm just going to line it up. And again, I just open up my album. I'm just going to bring my Teflon tool just to spread that glue around and burnish my paper on, especially over those magnet areas. And there we go. I've got a piece here now. I imagine that my flat piece here hadn't been cut and that it was still a rectangle, which was three and a quarter. So I went down to three inches wide by eight and a half tall. Now you can just place it here and just mark off where an even border would be or you can go back and mark one and a half inches and one and a half inches just like we did when we were cutting uh, our cover piece so one and a quarter uh, one and a half sorry and one and a half Get my scissors. I 
Now I'm using some non-directional paper here, so it didn't matter which way round I placed it down. But just make sure if you have got um, wording or text that you're doing that. But you've got it up the right way. And do you know what? I'm quite happy with that. If not, you can always just trim a little bit more. And distress ink, just to hide. Now I did that with a red pen, with a red ink pen, so you could see it. Usually I would just use a pencil, but the black soot distress ink hides your ink anyway. So even though I used the red pen, you would never know now. Go and making sure I'm going right to the edge. And covering. I'm pressing down. Of course, I'll need to do it again later for the inside. And that's the cover, uh, the front of the cover done. Now, with the two side pieces, again, they were going to be eight and a half, if I'm right. Yeah, eight and a half tall. Now, one was cut at two and a quarter, and one was cut with two and a quarter, and just a little bit extra. If you remember, we had a little bit extra for the width there. Now, I've already put my black soot on this. So I'm just going to place it on. And this is the two and a quarter exactly. So this goes on the shorter or the narrower spine. And then the back, I'm going to leave for now and see what I've got left. If I've got nothing left, what I'll do, I'll put just a black piece of cardstock in there and maybe one of the leftover um, images or something like that. So I'm going to see what I've got for the back later on. So there we go. There's our cover all done. So let's open up and we're going to go to our pages next. So, as I said, I used the largest journal pages and I printed off the four I want. And so all I'm going to do is cut them out. I'm just using my scissors because sometimes your printer might not print straight and can be quite tricky. So the trimmer then would come awkward to you. So I just find it much quicker and easier and I waste less by using my scissors and if it's not perfectly straight it won't matter because when we distress the edges with that uh, black soot you won't see it anyway. So let's just grab my trimmer, very nice and flat. So our pages or journal pages are 10 and one, two, and three eighths. So half is five and three sixteenths, which is there. Or what you can do is just fold in half, press the corner, and line up the corner there. If you're not into measuring tiny measurements. Now again, I'm just taking my stress ink. This also hides, if you didn't, if you'd left a little bit of white showing, all of a sudden the white has disappeared. So it's a nice finishing touch, but also hides any imperfections. Now on previous uh, Victoria Designs journal pages like this, um, in my Wizard School, Wizard School album, 
I actually used photo corner dies by Cool Cats to cut in so we've got places to put our photos. If you wanted to do that, now would be the time to cut in any corner pieces, um, corner photo slots that you want. So now I've got the same done with three more pages. So I've got six here and the two I've just done. So I've now got eight pages, enough to cover my journal or my folio. So let's glue these on. And remember you like, although it's black on black, just lift it up so you can see that you've got it censored. And I'll put the back of that over the top. See, these journal pages have so much detail that you really don't need to do much more to them. So now, when you're laying them out, be aware that you're working the left spine and the, the right spine. And here. And if I was using the photo slot dies, I would probably have my six by four ones there and maybe my four by fours just covering the dragon on this one. But again, there's space for people to just drop their photos, whatever size and then onto these. Let's go on to the back of this one. I think I'm out of shot, but I think you can gather what I'm doing. And coming back to this side. Last page. And the back. Got a piece of black card stuck to that one. And there we go. So that's our four pocket pages, all done. Now, you may think, why the inch spans here? Well, in this paper kit, we've got a piece of paper, or a piece of background paper, which is full of really nice strips. So I thought these would be fun just to put inside there if you wanted to as extra embellishments for covering the spine. So obviously you could use your offcuts from other bits or these ones. These are slightly thinner than one inch when I printed them out, so I thought they'd be perfect there. So we'll come to them later on if we've got time. So let's go to which bit should we do next? This. Let's do the inside pocket. So this is our two just regular slim pockets. Let's have some backing paper. Now I think I'm gonna go with these two, some nice dragons and some nice weaponry there. So let's have a look how wide. So our page was seven and a half, which means I'm going to be cutting my papers at seven 
and a quarter inches wide. So let's bring back my trimmer. Now bear in mind these are digital papers so I'm going to have to trim off the white before I start measuring. So seven and a half, let's go down a quarter, so seven and a quarter. So our bucket, uh, bottom pocket was five inches tall. So I'm gonna cut it at four and three quarters. Let me just double check. Yep, five inches, so four and three quarters. Again, just cover those edges. Now the height of the next two bits don't really matter because they're not covering a complete pocket. They're actually gonna be tucked in underneath. So I'm gonna need it at least two and a quarter. So I'm gonna go two and a half for that one and two for that one. So actually I could take the two off this one now. So this is gonna be the top pocket. And let's bring in that lovely blue. And I think, yes, yeah, that way. So seven and a quarter inches. So I wanted it to be at least two and a half, wasn't it? Let's go two and three quarters, just so we got some extra leeway because I want to cover that tape I left on earlier. All right, so I'm only distressing three edges here because I'm not going to see the bottom edge. So let's bring it back in. So let's start with I think it's that way around, yes. The large five inch pocket. I'm just gonna line it centrally there. Then the next one, make sure I've got my distressed edge on the top. Let's just, I missed a bit there, I think. And what we do now is we tuck that pocket up and, oh, we lift our pocket, sorry, and tuck our paper underneath. Now, I might catch them here because I've still got, actually, I could take it off if I get my finger in. Just need to be extra careful that I don't close the pocket until I'm ready. There we go. This is a risky one now. <laughs> There we go. Let me just grab my Teflon tool to burnish it down. And then our top piece. Let's tuck that in there. So that's the basic decoration of that pocket page. But because we've got all these ephemera pieces, why not? That might go nice because we're tying in the blues. Let's use one of these. So I'm just going to cut out the outside. There we 
go. I'm just gonna bring my ruler and my scoring tool. So I'm gonna go for the thinner one this time. I'm just gonna score the three black lines. So I've just used my ball tool just so that it folds nicely around. And you can see this has already been distressed, so I may not, or shall I? Yeah, because I've got the black distress, I think I'll just finish it off so it ties in. And it gets rid of that white core from that score line, so yeah. It was the best thing to do. So I'm just going to put some glue there and some glue here. And let's I'm going to use my tape just so it keeps in place for now, but you can just use your glue. Just taping down those three edges. Let's bring it over. And stick it down. And there are some journal cards now that we can just cut. A little bit of white showing there but it's disappeared now that i'm using my distress ink and I, you can just cut out all those cards and have them tucked in it's all sized perfectly to go together oh he goes up that way see there we are and the cards are going anywhere we want so that's the front page. Our, oh, got a bit of the paper cut. Our pages are done. So it's just the flap and our deep pocket left to go. I think I'm gonna keep going with this and it's already been cut to the width we wanted. So that's all I need to do now is the height. So it was three and a half. So my flap paper needs to be three and a quarter. And because I curved the edges earlier using my quarter punch, I used the large one. This time now I'm going to use the medium one. And that'll give me a nice layered corner. So our flap, sorry, our pocket is six inches tall. So let's go back to five and three quarters. One thing I've just noticed, I've cornered the wrong side, so my dragons are upside down. But that's not to worry. I haven't wasted it, because what I can do, I can actually put that on the inside instead, and now my dragons are the correct way up. Or, if you do that, you can just take your corner rounder and corner the other side as well. and it just looks like you've got a nicer mat that way. Now, think before you glue these down, how you're gonna do a closure. Now my closure is gonna be um, a folio closure, so I can do it on top of my decorative paper. And do you know what, I still stuck it on upside down. There we are. Bit. 
bit. Let's lift it up. Now be careful on this bit because if you remember, it's a deep pocket, so you're not pushing onto anything. You don't want to squash your pocket. There we go. And then, so all we've got left to do now is check for the inside. So I'll just go for, so as we go, we've got this dragon one, which I'll tie the blue one. Let's go for this one. So again, was it seven? And a quarter wide, yes. Yep, seven and a quarter wide. And our flap was three and a quarter. remember this time that I punch the top. And then we just want to line our pocket. So though you only technically see that bit, you want to go a bit deeper. So I'm going to go down to about five. I was looking for my... Now this time, I'm not going to leave Gavin and take it up to my score line. There we go. And black tape has got there. And there. And that's your folio all decorated. We've still got that piece to do there, which is exactly the same as we did on the front. I got a piece that's not big enough. I'll find a piece later on and I'll finish that off, but it's exactly the same as we did on that one. So that's all I need now is just a quick closure here. Now I'm going to use my Cool Cats dies once again. Now these are just circle dies, but the special thing is they got a little hole in the middle and that's a matte and layer one. So I've already cut some of there and you also get some matching ones using some uh, piercing. So they're good for your ribbon ends. So I've already cut a few out here. Now, if you haven't seen me do this before, there are loads of uh, videos of me doing this on my channel, but also in my last Victoria Designs with my um, Alice in Wonderland project, I showed you how to do these. So have a look back at that. But basically I just do a pattern circle with a hole in the middle onto a black, back it with another black, then take my brad, go through that and through another one but I'm not gluing that second one or the third one really I'm just opening it up that allows me then to have a gap in between those glued ones and that one I've just stuck on I'm going to tape it down 
and add some glue to it and just place that in the center and then I do exactly the same again with a few more so glue two blacks together I have lost the little brad so I'll finish it off once I'm done. As I said, I've got videos on how I've done this, but you could also do um, the swing closures or anything like so. And then you'd glue that there, let them dry, take some one mil wax cord, tie it around, cut, uh, wind it around however many times you want, cut it off, and then use those full circles to make a ribbon end. Just by gluing those in between. So two black ones, squash it around your cord, around the end. Glue them together and place the decorative one on top and on the bottom. So as simple as that. But I'm sure you've got your own closure ideas as well. And then, of course, if I wanted to, I could use the envelopes. I've got another um, long pocket like I did on the front, uh, maybe a corner pocket. So plenty of ideas then on what else you could put onto your pages or onto your larger pockets. So as I said, I've also got these one inch um, border pieces that I can place on all these spaces here because they're all an inch. Or you can use your decorative papers. So that is my Dragon Lady Folio album. As I said, you could use any of your Victoria design paper kits, all the journals, all the kits with the journals come in the same sizes. So you could use your other kits as well. And if you've enjoyed watching this, I'd love it if you'd give me that thumbs up or even hit that subscribe button. I'd really, really appreciate it. But if you keep watching and you follow along, I might just come up with a little bonus project for something to go inside here, which would match the whole kit. So stay tuned for that. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'm really, really looking forward to seeing your own versions of these folios. So see you all again soon.